Folks, my next guest tonight has been covering politics for 30 years. He's the host of Hardball. Please welcome Chris Matthews. <laughs> Asking you as you're coming up here, is this the first time you've been on the new show? Because we talked a bunch on the yeah, old show. Last time yeah. you went after me for being Irish, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you you're gonna, you're you gonna being catch Irish. me eating. You're gonna give what ten bucks or hundred bucks if somebody caught me eating a potato. And that night, I <laughs> caught some, someone. One of my writers went to dinner with you, and he caught you eating a French potato. French fries, yeah, thanks exactly. Man. Yeah, I actually, when we would I'll put up you. a picture of you on the old show, we would just put up an Idaho potato with your hair on it. <laughs> Well, certain but I can say that because I'm Irish. Are I'm okay. Irish. Yeah, I can say all it's right, okay yeah. if we call each other a potato. Yeah, now, that's all right. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about tomorrow, uh, the inauguration. You covered a lot of inaugurations, yeah. and you were actually in the Carter administration. Yeah, I was there. What happens? We talk about the peaceful it's, transfer of, yeah. for power. What is the moment of okay. transfer like? I worked for a president who was a great guy, and he got beaten, Jimmy Carter. And uh, I was a speechwriter. So I'm. I'm I got to clear out of the office, but I had to write speeches right there. You're the in way. the White House, West Wing, yeah, yeah. executive office building, right next yeah. door. And I left the office about 20 minutes to 12 on inaugural day because you had to get out of there, right? Because and I had my Rolodex, you know, the old Rolodex, the box and stuff, my papers. And in it. it's everybody, right? It's people yeah, you walk out, out the door, your job's over. And I just realized because one of the speechwriters stayed around to tell me what was going on afterwards. At exactly noon on inaugural day, these guys come in with big photographs, big color photographs, beautifully framed. And they create a new reality. You know, Trump's going to have he and Melania and the kids' pictures all over the White House. And, car and, the, and all the pictures with Barack Obama and his great family are all going to be gone. It's a weird thing that goes on. And if you really are weird, you stick there during lunch and actually watch this weird transition going on. It's like Carter, or in this case, Obama was never there. And Trump was always there. It's just a weird thing that goes on inside. And what is the? Yeah, I know. How's what that, is that? Idea? They're cheering. They're cheering for know. democracy is out there. Is this a mixed audience? Is this a mixed audience? How many yeah, Trump? How them. many Trump voters here are willing to say they voted for Trump? <laughs> ha! Ha! That's the bravest man I've ever met. They're in hiding. They're in hiding. They're hiding, they're hiding now, out. Now, okay, what is the actual moment? Because I don't actually know. When, what, is, does Trump become president when he takes the oath yeah, or just yeah. at noon? Okay, this is the weird part. And this is not funny. Uh, there's a guy, a general out in Omaha, Nebraska, at SAC headquarters right now, who does strategic voice air command, strategic yeah. air command. And he does voice recognition. And if a call comes at 5 minutes to 12 from Barack Obama, he can start a nuclear war. But, you know, he hasn't. At five minutes after 12 or one minute after 12, if a call comes from a voice that is Donald Trump's, he can do anything he wants. How's that for a thought? Why did you make me think that? <laughs> because so it's something we should have thought of when we voted. That's the, that's the key moment. When to does think Trump about. get the codes? He's he got the codes it. already? Tomorrow morning around 7.30, I hear he goes in, and I heard when people of sound mind have come out of those meetings, they're either crying or, or thrown away by it. The amazing power to destroy this planet that's in the finger of a president of the United States, the second he takes office, is just too awesome for a normal human being to imagine. That's why I don't. <laughs> you know, no, but, um, uh, uh, but Brian, you were but a Trump's a hard guy to figure. You know, he is. Well, we, that's actually one of the oddest things about Donald Trump is that uh, it's not like I disagree with him. It's that I'm not sure where he stands most of the time. It's the it's the mercurial nature of him that you want yeah. the president to be. You want to know what the guy believes and what he'll do. Yeah. But he specifically said he wants to keep people off balance. Yeah, you know, when, when I interviewed him that time, I got him in trouble because I said what. What should, be the, what, what should happen to a woman who chooses to have an abortion? Under your plan? He says, well, she, there has to be some punishment for her. And he said, yeah, some punishment. And, and, and then he said, he also said... But it's okay, also, because the next day he took it all back. And he, yeah, that's what he thought, a few hours later. And he also said we can't, he wouldn't rule out using nuclear weapons in Europe. Europe's small. <laughs> if you blow up somebody, everybody gets blown up. And he says, well, he thinks, if, why do we make them if we're not going to use them? That's true. But during you know the what they say, use it and lose it. Yeah. During the break, he's an amazingly, he's a marketing genius. He's always thinking, look at this, so he's made all his money. He's marketing, branding. We know what we're talking about during the break. The commercial break on your yeah, show. Yeah, no, when you had him on, yeah. Zoolander. He told me. He Zoolander 2? Like Zool no, he, oh, no. He's smarter than us on this one. He said, Zoolander worked. Zoolander 2 did not work. And he explained it to me. It had to do, it had to do. <laughs> It had to do with the timing. 
You understand? What? He's a marketing what guy. Do you mean the timing. He said that well, yeah, there's a certain moment when people thought that really good-looking models were stupid and that would be funny. Then it stopped not working again. It didn't work the second time. I mean, he's an odd, different this guy. This is what he was thinking about while you were asking about a woman's right to choose. Yeah. Um, wow. But anyway, the other funny thing is. <laughs> The other funny thing was, yeah. one time we, we sent you know, the family Christmas cards, because we hadn't known the guy 20 years, I've been interviewing him for 20 years, and I sent him a Christmas card with the family. My wife did, she's here actually. We sent the picture of our family, everybody does that. Now you'd expect that you'd get one back, or thanks for the note, or Merry Christmas, or whatever, Happy Holidays. He sent it back autographed. <laughs> <laughs> And he a sent FedEx you a symbol. photo of your family yeah, autographed, autographed by him? And he said, beautiful family, Donald Trump in a FedEx envelope. I said, this is something else. You know what that says to me? <laughs> that says to me, nice family, mine now. <laughs> My family, my name on it. Obama. Okay, let's talk Obama. Last night of the Obama administration, 2008, you said you had a thrill going up your leg yeah. hearing Barack Obama speak. Now it's the eight years later. How's the thrill going up your leg? Has it? Good. Is it presently going back down your leg? No, it's not. And that could be deep vein thrombosis. That's, you should walk around. That's, make sure you have that checked out. That's only the beginning of what I felt. Okay. Only the beginning. So of what eight I felt. years later, you're gonna let me talk on this? Okay. Oh my God. Because, I mean, I, I got to <laughs> it. Really, you're accusing someone else of not letting them okay, talk? Okay. Can I just say wow, something? Wow. That is the potato calling the French fry starchy. Unbelievable. Please. Touché. Please. I'll go over here. Okay. I've got a fresh, hot okay. cup of coffee. Okay. You've got exactly one minute. I'm going to sing the Barack throw. Obama. I'm going to sing the throw. Here's a guy who lives what he talks. He says, go get a clipboard and run for office. You don't like the way things are going. Because guess what he did? He got his, his butt kicked in South Chicago, south side of Chicago, by Bobby Rush because he was too Ivy League. What did he do? He didn't walk away. Went out into the suburbs, the white suburbs of Illinois, ran where people have never voted for a guy like him, ran for the U.S. Senate. He went up and ran. He ran for the Senate. Got, he won the, the U.S. Senate race his first run. He gives the speech of the lifetime. That's when I said, you just saw the first African-American president on television. You should show that. Clip. 2004, yeah, Boston. Yeah. And then, then the guy... That's when he said... That's when he said his grandfather was a goat herder. Right. Well, yeah. He, he tried to I, I, out humble you, everybody it's, it's in America. A better movie. It's a better movie than he could ever make about a president. He came from nowhere. Uh, he, 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 he had the guts to do it. He went out there and did it. He's the finest president we've had, and I don't know how long. Everything he's done <laughs> has been. Um, He's, he's, he's cut the unemployment rate in half. He's tripled the stock market, as you said a minute ago in the monologue. He saved the auto industry. He brought about marriage equality. I mean, he did so many things. And he did it all. And there's not a bit of scandal. His family's completely perfect. The kids are perfect. He, he's everybody, every conservative's dream of a president, except he's not their dream of a president. <laughs> and it's just not the way it is, for whatever reason. So that's my speech. Well, I, I liked your speech. Thank Please you. come back and give another speech once we know what Trump's doing in reality. Because okay. the hard thing about Trump is, the hard thing about Trump is you don't know he's going, going, what he's going to do. And I'm, I'd love to talk with you. Actually, something is actually on the books to judge. Yeah, it's unpredictable, right? but thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. you can catch Chris Matthews, not yet, all-day coverage of the inauguration on MSNBC.